And if you, um, oh, Mark must be having troubles. Okay. Uh, and please mute yourself. Um, you're welcome to ask questions as we go along, but right now, uh, please mute yourself if you, just so we don't have any background noise. Okay. Uh, and these links and everything will be at the end of the presentation too. Um, and I did not, I did not mention um, that if you want a copy of the presentation so that you don't have to furiously write down all this information, uh, just email me directly and I will be happy to send you a, a copy of the presentation. And you're welcome to share it with other master gardeners in there. Um, just, just let them know if any, if you have any other people that might be interested, just let them know too. Let's see, we get Zoom going. Yes, okay. Um, so Virginia, so the Master Gardener program uh, is run through the Virginia Cooperative Extension offices throughout the state of Virginia. Uh, and we are actually supported by two universities. Um, so Virginia Tech is the, one of the universities and Virginia State University, which is in Petersburg, Virginia, is the second. Uh, and they both work together to, uh, they do various research, other kinds of information gathering, and they disseminate the information through Virginia Cooperative Extension and in turn uh, through the master gardeners to the public. And uh, both land grant universities, both are, both are land grant universities, I should say, uh, in the Morrell Act of 1862 established the Virginia, Virginia established the very first land grant universities, which Virginia Tech is part of, and the uh, the act. Act of 1890 established the, that's the traditional African-American um, universities throughout the Southeastern United States and other parts of the country too. Um, so in the Southeastern United States, that just goes back to that time period, um, each Southern state has two agricultural universities. Um, and I, I don't have to go over the reason behind it, uh, kind of unsavory at times, you know, but uh, we are fortunate enough to have two great universities that support us in our work. Uh, the Hatch Act of 1887 established the agricultural research stations and uh, they are spread out throughout the state of Virginia in the Northern District, which we are part of. Uh, there's one, co one college level uh, research station in Orange County, Virginia. Uh, that's the College of Agriculture, the Department of Soil Sciences runs that one. And then our official agricultural research station is actually in Winchester, Virginia. And they study various uh, vineyard related issues, diseases, insect problems, and uh, orchard issues. Um, so that they do that research for the entire state. And we have, and that's, uh, that's in Winchester, Virginia. And the Cooperative Extension Service throughout the country, throughout the United States was established in 1914. And uh, as you can see, we are coming up on the 110th anniversary, which will be coming up soon. And if you would like to dive deeper into this information, uh, the link is right there. And like I said, I will provide this presentation for you if you're interested. Um, and it's right there, there's lots more. <laughs> this was just a very quick snapshot. Um, so Virginia Cooperative Extension helps lead the engagement mission of uh, Virginia Tech and Virginia State, just as I previously stated. Uh, and they do this through building local relationships and collaborative partnerships. Uh, and they, they both help, we help people put scientific knowledge to work. Um, so that's the main emphasis is that it's scientific knowledge that we're providing to the public. And uh, they, we do this through providing various learning experiences, uh, in the economic sphere, the environmental sphere, and uh, in social well-being being, uh, classes and various, uh, um, they call it uh, programs, programming in the Virginia Cooperative Extension area. And uh, the master gardeners provide uh, great help in all those different scopes and areas also. So we have a big mission in Virginia Cooperative Extension, but it can be very fun at times too. And you get to meet a lot of people, just like you would through the Master Gardener program also. Uh, and this another quick, uh, VCE is broken down into agricultural natural resources, which I'm an agent of, I'm a horticulture agent. 
Uh, and the Master Gardener Volunteer Program is usually run through the Agricultural Natural Resources part of the Extension Office, um, either by an agent or a um, Master Gardener Coordinator that um, is, a, is in, each, in each office. 4-H uh, Youth Development is also part of the Virginia Cooperative Extension Program areas. That's usually the one we're most commonly, uh, that's the one most people know about. <laughs> so the one people most familiar with that program. Uh, and we also provide base, various services through family and consumer sciences agents uh, also spread throughout the state. So they provide uh, food safety trainings, um, various canning programs, which are very, very popular. Uh, a lot of food safety, a lot of exercise type programs are run through those. Uh, health, health in general goes through those program areas. Uh, so a little bit about the Master Gardener program overall. The very first Master Goat Partner Program in the, in the United States was established in 1972 in Washington State. Uh, and it was established, they actually had, amazingly, 600 applicants for that very first Master Gardener training class. Uh, and the very first plant clinic was in the Seattle area at the Tacoma Mall. Um, so 1972 is when the very first program in the United States was established. Uh, and as, as you can, as you're, you are interested in joining now, this program has spread across the entire United States. Um, I believe, yes, I, I believe every state does have a extent, uh, master gardener program uh, and even some of the territories. So it's very exciting um, to uh, be involved with this kind of community volunteers and outreach. So in Virginia, the very first Master Gardener volunteer training was in 1979 in Arlington, Virginia. And currently, uh, just like my association, the, rap, the, the I coordinate the Rapid and River Master Gardeners, and we cover four counties. Um, so not every county has a uh, Master Gardener program that is solely for that county. Um, so 62 extension Master Gardener units are in Virginia, uh, but that doesn't, um, some of the associations are bunched together. So, but that is amazing if you think about it that way. And the very, I think the very, I did not have that date on this slide, but the very newest one I think is not very old. It's um, 2014, 2015, I think in Southwest Virginia. Um, so um, various counties are still, <laughs> still become, still opening up Master Gardener programs and recruiting volunteers. And uh, this whole program is, um, exciting overall. So it's a, uh, you all are joining a very great group of volunteers if you, um, if you, that, uh, that's all I can say about that. Usually everyone's very friendly and very knowledgeable in their various areas. Um, so there's three key points that we, as you can, we'll, we'll go through the various projects and they all touch on this in some, some manner. Um, so I know specifically in a, the Rapid A River Master Gardeners, we try to touch on these various aspects. Um, so environmental sustain, oh, you got a sneak preview. Environmental stewardship, um, we try to increase awareness and knowledge of responsible landscape management. Um, so that is very important. So that's very, through various turf programs, uh, planting native plants, uh, water management on your property. There's various, various routes of education in that area. Uh, yard waste management, I didn't mention that. Composting programs would be a great way of working into that. Uh, teaching people not to, um, not to rake your leaves in the fall. It's better to uh, use a mulching lawnmower if you're able to. Leave the, leaves, leave the leaves in place. There's a great publication through Virginia Cooperative Extension that's called that. Uh, kind of a tongue twister, but it's a great way of doing it too. Uh, erosion control programs, lots of different areas. Um, and this picture is from uh, Shenandoah National Park. I took this picture myself. So um, that is looking over the Shenandoah Valley. Um, I just love that picture. So <laughs> um, if you had any ideas, that's uh, Mary's Rock Hike, if you've ever done that in the Sh uh, Shenandoah National Park. That's where you'd see that view right there. Just as a little side note. Uh, we also try to touch on different economic and social benefits of horticulture. Of course, there's lots of, uh, horticulture is a great, great way to um, work through mental health issues, um, different, uh, 
provides exercise, it provides lots of different benefits to the community when you're working with various groups like our Master Gardeners. Uh, and if you'd like to know more about the social and health issues of horticulture or gardening in general, Washington State University has a great lot of great research into that, how it does positively, working with plants does positively impact uh, folks' mental health. Uh, and they have great, lots of great articles, Washington State University is who I was referring to. Uh, also through skill building activities, so we'll see a lot about that coming up in a few more slides. Uh, and promoting knowledge, health, um, lots of great benefits and folks may just not know about it. So it's very important for us to talk about these various issues also. And then food security, we just touched upon a little bit in the topic number two there, but it also is very important. So um, we have various demonstration gardens across our associations. This one right here is from the Carver Center in Culpeper County. Uh, and that's on Route 15. This, this is our vegetable demonstration garden, which we'll see another picture of in a few more slides later. Um, they've donated over, this year has been pretty good. I think they've donated at least, they might even get close to 2,000 pounds donated of food uh, to the food closets and um, various food banks around Culpeper Madison, Culpeper Madison counties. Um, so two th they did hit 2,000 pounds last year, and the garden is not big, it's, it's teeny tiny. <laughs> uh, the volunteers do great work in there, and they, they would definitely want your help if you're part of the, if you live in the, the four county area of the Rapidan River Master Gardeners. Uh, so an extension master gardener is a volunteer trained by VCE, so that's the, the various happy, happy volunteers you would be joining. Um, very enthusiastic group in general, usually. Um, trained educators, so that's through our training class and through various continuing education programs. Uh, and after all this information and after all this teaching we're gonna do, um, you're always welcome to ask questions from uh, the mentor members, uh, various master gardeners across the way. Uh, but hopefully you'll be, you'll be comfortable answering questions, finding answers, scientifically based answers. Uh, be able to share knowledge with others, make a difference, care about people. And um, we have a great group of folks like I was already saying. So I'm um, just excited to talk about all of this if you haven't already noticed. So it's very, it's very, very exciting. Um, so there's various levels of Extension Master Gardener volunteers. There's a training level, which um, that's when you're in the training class in the spring. Um, so 50 hours of volunteer training uh, and there's nothing you have to do. You're already interested in the class and that's all you have to, you don't have to worry about those hours. Uh, Master Gardener interns, um, it's required to complete 50 volunteer hours. Uh, COVID-19 has really complicated things. So there's a lot of leeway and um, it's usually a full year, uh, the year. So we're taking our training and uh, starting in January, we'll finish in April. Uh, in most um, normal years, um, it would be December 31st of 2021 is when we'd like you to complete the 50 volunteer hours. But COVID-19 has really complicated things. So I am very flexible. Um, and I know the other associations are too. So um, we'll, we'll be flexible with that. Um, and once you complete those 50 volunteer hours, you become a, a master gardener, a, a certified master gardener. And uh, to keep that certification each year after year, all you need to do is complete 20 volunteer hours to the various volunteer projects we're gonna talk about later uh, and eight continuing education hours. Um, and I know personally, we've had lots of different volunteers uh, push close to a hundred volunteer hours. Uh, it's, um, there's a great passion from the various projects. So. Uh, so, is it, so it will be through Zoom classes, being, that which will be held on Thursdays from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the first class is on January 21st, 2021. Uh, we are gonna try to have uh, three in-person workshops, which will be held on Saturdays. Uh, the very first one will be on February 20th at 10 a.m. to noon at James Madison's Montpelier in Orange County. And we'll, we, we will be doing hands-on pruning, hopefully. <laughs> uh, just depends on how everything goes. Uh, March 6th will be our second workshop from 10 a.m. to noon at Tufton Farms. And that topic will be propagation. And that is in Albemarle County. And that is where the um, 
Thomas Jefferson's historical plant. I always get that name wrong, um, uh, but that's where they grow the plants for uh, Thomas Jefferson's property and the ones you can buy too there. Uh, April 17th, 9 a.m. to noon, also at James Madison's Montpelier. And we'll be, we will be walking around, looking at the trees, talking about it, and that will be our woody plants class. That is absolutely exciting. I love doing that class. We will see the various historic trees around the property. We'll walk around the front of the, the front yard of the property, around the front of the house, the side yard behind it, and the formal garden behind the house also. Um, so there's a lot of great, um, very, very, there are some really old ones. But most of the plantings are from the turn of the last century, so the early 1900s. Um, and we'll learn about the history of the property a little bit then too. Uh, the DuPonts actually owned that property uh, in the early 1900s. Uh, and then May 8th will be the graduation in person, hopefully. Like I've said before, hopefully all this works out. Excuse me. Uh, and that graduation will be at the uh, we don't know the locations yet, but that will be at, if you're a Fluvanna Master Gardener, it'll be in Fluvanna. The, Al the Piedmont Master Gardeners will have their own location and we'll have our own up here. Um, more than likely in Culpeper somewhere. Uh, and that's, yeah, I did already put a date on there. Um, the 50 volunteer hours, internship hours. Um, I do have a date of June 30th, 2022 for my group. Um, but uh, that can be flexible. We, we never know what's going to happen, of course. Uh, training fee is $190. So, uh, and we did change the date from the flyer. Um, so uh, we'd like you to be able to, like you to turn in the fee by December 31st, 2020. And there are various options to pay. Uh, you can pay by cash and, or check. And you mail that along with your application to the, uh, if you're from Fluvanna, you mail it to the Fluvanna Extension Office. Uh, Piedmont Master Gardeners, you mail it, you mail it to the uh, Albemarle, uh, Charlottesville Extension Office. Uh, and if you're, in Rapidan, if you're in the Rapidan River Master Gardeners, you mail it to the Culpeper Office. There's also an online payment option uh, that you can pay by a credit card. And we'll have the link for that at the very last slide of the presentation. Um, so there's various different projects. Um, I probably should take this slide out going forward. Let's go, let's get into the pictures. I know everybody likes pictures. Um, so um, Sue, I, I moved every, I moved things around a little bit so y'all could talk about each picture, but if uh, Sue, you are up first. All right, so my name is Sue Tepper and I am the training coordinator for Fluvanna County. Um, I took the class in 2015 after I retired and my parents had been master gardeners up in the valley since the early 90s, 1994. And what I loved about it was the people. Um, I really, really enjoy the people who are master gardeners. And I felt that this was a good way to give back to the community. So I took the class and I've been very involved. I've, I've probably got a hundred, I mean, I'm sorry, a thousand service hours in plus um, on the various projects that we do in Fluvanna. But we have different demonstration gardens. The one you're looking at now is um, a workshop that we were doing out at the Butterfly Garden at Pleasant Grove Park. Um, we also have a community garden at Pleasant Grove Park and we have a children's garden at Carysbrook Elementary School. Go ahead and flip, Ashley. So this is the children, a picture of the children's garden. We were doing a workshop work day, getting the garden ready, going through doing some maintenance on it. And then what the garden looks like um, as it gets into the season. We work with the special needs students at this school. And so they go through all of the planting and harvesting that, that one would do in a garden with both flowers and uh, vegetables. Next slide, yeah. So we have an annual plant sale in order to raise funds to fund our various projects and to support um, scholarships that we give out. We give out an annual horticulture scholarship and we give scholarships for 4-H camp, uh, summer camp for the kids. And we raise that money by ha holding an annual plant sale. So this is a picture of, of the activity going on. Next slide. 
Fluvanna is very, very proud of their agricultural background and history, and they celebrate that every year with an event called Old Farm Day. We have a booth out there and we focus on children at this booth and we probably have, and given that we're a very small county, um, we probably have more than 600 contacts at our booth during that event. So here are some of our master gardeners having fun with their sunglasses on. Next slide. So we have our demonstration gardens, the butterfly garden, the community garden, and a wonderful wildlife habitat and uh, walking trails at Pleasant Grove Park. Uh, we have the children's garden at Carysbrook Elementary. We hold our annual plant sale. We have the um, annual event, Old Farm Day at Pleasant Grove Park. Um, we have a horticultural help desk, which we hold at the public library. And right now we are doing everything online, which is, is really sad because we can't interact with the public by doing that. But once we can all get back together again, we'll be at the library. And then we do a lot of work with kids in this county. So we work with the schools, with the 4-H and the library um, on their summer programs. So a lot of our focus goes into, into children. All right. Thank you, Sue. Okay, Fern and Bev, uh, I'll leave it up to y'all. <laughs> okay, um, Fern, speak up whenever. Um, we also have an annual plant sale that takes place um, in usually in the first first week of May, um, and we spend a lot of time in the fall and early spring having what we call potting parties, um, uh, potting plants from the various master gardeners' um, gardens. Um, and it's really a wonderful event and we get a very large crowd of over a thousand in recent years. Um, and uh, unfortunately we had to cancel it this year. Um, we're hoping Fingers crossed that we can do it next. We don't know, but we've already started and I think we've had two potting parties. So it's the main fundraiser we have to um, support, to finance the, the over 20 projects that Piedmont Master Gardeners are involved with. Okay. Uh, we also have a demonstration garden. This is at um, uh, Santera Martha Jefferson Hospital here um, and um, it provides a wonderful venue for uh, patients and their families to wander through and um, check out the native plants and enjoy nature. Okay. Um, we have garden docents. We have a through the garden gate program uh, where we have um, uh, garden docents in um, uh, gardens uh, through, throughout Albemarle and Charlottesville um, and they're stationed around the gardens and um, people from the public come in and um, walk through and ask questions and we provide information and it happens one, about once a month um, during the spring and summer. Okay. Um, we have a wonderful online newsletter called The Garden Shed that comes out monthly. You can subscribe to it and um, it will arrive automatically in your inbox. Um, it's really very good and it's always timely, including to-do lists um, and um, topics that are um, seasonal. Um, and so we have a group of master gardeners who write those articles. Okay. We also have um, a really nice website site um, and you'll see the, you've already seen uh, links for that. You can also just Google Piedmont Master Gardeners. And we've been spending a lot of time in the last year and a half or so updating and adding new features to that, including timely topics now that we're posting really interesting articles on gardening and environmental issues um, every other week. We also have um, an, a new program called, which was actually launched during COVID, 
uh, called Ask a Master Gardener. Um, and it is on this website. Um, every other week, uh, a typical question is posted with an answer. And we also have it on our um, Charlottesville Albemarle Facebook page. Okay. Garden Basics, this is a really popular program with the local community where we do um, two hour workshops once a month given by master gardeners. It's a great way to share your passion and knowledge for gardening. Um, and as the name suggests, these are on basic gardening topics um, and is geared to the novice gardener. And we partner with the Trinity Episcopal Church in downtown Charlottesville and their Bread and Roses program. Currently it's uh, being done virtually, of course. Yes. Yes. And actually there is one this Saturday, I believe. Okay. Ah, this is the Through the Garden Gate. Um, you can see two of our loyal master gardeners who have, uh, who um, uh, welcome people to the garden as there's a small fee to go through. Really beautiful gardens including, uh, if any of you knew, um, Cole Burrell's garden we've, we've shown a couple of times. Okay. Um, we also have after school garden club programs where we help um, school children, elementary children um, learn about gardening and help them with hands-on projects, um, planting, um, harvesting, learning about vegetables, and um, uh, what you can do with them. And we have a pro, we, we work, we partner with Monticello. We have a program uh, which is called Garden Ambassadors. And uh, so master gardeners are stationed around uh, the Monticello Gardens and answer questions from visitors touring through the gardens. Okay. Uh, we also have horticult horticultural help desks. We have one at the Cooperative Extension office um, in the county office building on Fifth Street. And we also have mobile help desks. So those um, are at our farmer's market in Charlottesville, typically, and also Crozet, um, twice a month in Crozet, I believe. And um, then at a number of one-time events that we um, help with or conduct around the county and Charlottesville, we'll have, and including our plant sale, we will have a help desk there. So we can answer questions that come up either on the spot or getting back to them. Next slide. So, and so here, here we're talking oh. about these mobile um, help desks that, that happen. Um, for example, the, the Piedmont uh, Landscape Association has, has a one day seminar um, in Charlottesville every year and we always have a help desk there as well as at the Heritage Harvest Festival and at the county fair. Um, so multiple places throughout the county. Ah, this is, this is a good one. The Healthy Virginia Lawns is um, all over Virginia. So, and basically what, what it involves is uh, going out to um, individual homeowners houses and taking a soil sample. And um, after that is returned, we um, make specific recommendations about the amount of uh, fertilizer should, that should be used and um, how they can uh, eat, um, environmentally responsibly care for their lawns. So it's quite a popular program. So here, this is just a, a review of, of some of our projects 
um, the demo gardens, um, their classes, lectures. We have a spring lecture series um, for, for the master gardeners and the public. We have um, various workshops. Garden Basics would be an example. Um, we also have a speakers bureau, which um, so that um, organizations from the local community can come to the master gardeners and say, we, gee, we'd really like a, um, a presentation on composting. And um, we can work with them to provide that. And here, here again, you see the help desks, some of the help desks and the after school garden clubs. The other thing I would just say is that we've developed, a, a restructured some of our, um, to a therapeutic horticulture uh, project. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be going around to different, like the, the Mary Williams Senior Center, the Java daycare. Uh, VIA, uh, which is the uh, Virginia Institute of Autism. There's one school there that we're involved in. Um, and um, on our own, which are uh, Region 10's mental health um, house and uh, programs there. So it'll, it'll be a, a, a fun project, um, just, you know, helping them connect with and being stimulated with nature and horticulture. Um, with an educational component, but also fun. So there's lots of opportunities. I think that's it. Yes, that is. Thank you all very much. You're welcome. Okay. I think Mark was on. Uh, he's a mentor for the Rapidan River Master Gardeners. Uh, is your microphone working, Mark? Would you like to say a few words? Yes, my microphone's working. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Rapp. I live in lovely Barbersville in Orange County, and I'm the uh, Master Gardener Volunteer Coordinator for the uh, Piedmont, uh, I'm sorry, the um, Rapidan uh, Master Gardener Association. And primarily, we service uh, public schools, we service uh, a retirement community, and we service James Madison's Montpelier as well as uh, things like the Carver Center Vegetable Demo Garden, of which you can see a truckload of, are those watermelons? Yes. Watermelons. And uh, you, you quoted, uh, Ashley, uh, how, many, how many pounds of food was donated last year? Last year was uh, 2,000 okay. pounds. Well, a couple of truckloads of food. So, uh, and that is a, a group effort by all the master gardeners from the Fort County uh, catchment area. So, and what's on the next slide? Uh, oh, that doesn't have to do with me, does it? Nope, that's in Madison County. Okay. Well, let me just go back to uh, a couple of, uh, you know, Every time I'm at Montpelier in the DuPont Garden pulling a weed, I say, a victory for the Constitution. A victory <laughs> for the Constitution. And anyway, the real benefit is, is, you know, I work alongside other master gardeners and, you know, the full-time professionals who work at uh, Montpelier and Robert. And just about any question I have, he knows the answer to. He, he's just a really knowledgeable experienced and helpful guy. And uh, so yes, I do get a victory cut for the Constitution, but I learn a lot as I pull those weeds. And uh, we, we have a number of, and also I must say during the, uh, you know, this era, this, this uh, short era, we hope of uh, the coronavirus, we've had to kind of re, uh, retool our presentations and retool our interaction with public schools, for example. Even Montpelier is, uh, has very stringent requirements about, they've closed tours of the house because they don't like groups of people. And, uh, you know, for reasons of the coronavirus. So um, I think in our planning for next year, we'll be addressing uh, using some more virtual strategies, uh, some more Zoom meetings, and, uh, you know, for example, I heard an idea today that, well, there's a weekly Zoom meeting where um, your, your gardener lawn topic could be addressed. And how, how 
simple as that. So uh, I invite, quick show of hands, anybody from Orange County? Nobody from Orange County? Well, come on over and volunteer here because it's a great place. <laughs> No, they can't. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm, I'm from Culpeper County, but I live in Rapidan. This, this is um, Rapidan River, right? Yes, you can certainly volunteer in Orange. Yes. Uh, you can volunteer in any of the four counties. So Culpeper, Orange, Madison, or Green County. So we have a very large geographic area. <laughs> But you're welcome to, definitely. Uh, this particular slide here is also showing, um, we have helped out at the uh, FFA stake summer camp also. Uh, this is in Madison County at Graves Mountain Lodge, if you know where that is. Uh, and this was a very fun event. Uh, Sherry Cherie, our Madison County uh, coordinator, uh, she helped set this up and did a lot of great work and we had a lot of, lot of other good volunteers and we worked with, uh, they were ranging from 14 up to 18 years of age. Uh, and we did uh, herb culture and we did various hands-on projects and uh, it was just a great opportunity all around. So uh, this is just a quick snapshot of the various projects. We saw the vegetable garden, Carver veg vegetable garden demonstration garden before. Uh, and like I said, we donated over 2000 pounds uh, not not very many volunteers. We have a lot of good steady. Um, and if you live in any of the four counties of the Rapid Name River Master Gardeners, we're welcome, welcome to uh, uh, help with that garden. But I think we've had a consistent 10 volunteers really helping work in that garden really strongly. Uh, they, they work they work great. Very good volunteers. A lot of good work. Um, so this picture is from uh, Montpelier here, Mark. Uh, this, is, this is actually from one of our trainings. So uh, uh, but uh, we will see this in our current training when we're pruning. So this was one of our pruning classes uh, from James Madison's Montpelier. Uh, and this is Nettie Mack. Uh, there are, there's, uh, each county does have a, uh, actually I don't, yeah, Mark didn't mention it. I don't believe Orange does, but uh, Culpeper, Madison and Green counties each have a horticultural therapy program if you're interested in working with that also. Uh, and they do a lot of wonderful work through that program, through the various senior centers. Uh, we also have various school programs. Mark mentioned the ones in orange. Uh, this ha just happens to be a picture from our Madison uh, primary school garden. And uh, they plant various uh, cool season vegetables in these vegetable beds there at the school. And uh, they go through uh, the uh, book, Mr. McGregor's Garden. Uh, so they, they go through that book and uh, teach about the various vegetables in that book with the kids. Uh, and it's a, just a very happy, <laughs> as you can see, the kids are really digging into that, uh, into that raised bed right there. So uh, great program. Uh, you can, and you can volunteer if you're part of the Rapidan River Master Garden, you can volunteer with any of the primary school programs that you would like to. And I think I have a little visitor, don't I? Yes, <laughs> my cat just jumped up behind me. Okay, uh, and uh, the plant cells too. Uh, the Rapidan River is also Rapidan River Master Gardeners also have an annual plant cell, uh, and this is Mr. Bob Lemon in the background. Uh, he's really good, knowledgeable tomato plant grower. He grows all of his own tomato plants, knows a lot about them. Um, so you'll get to be, meet various volunteers like uh, Mr. Lemon here, uh, and the plant cell is just great opportunity overall. Uh, just like. Uh, Sue and uh, Bev and uh, Fern were talking about with their various associations too. <laughs> I really got a little visitor today. She never does that when I'm when I'm not on the video. Okay, uh, the Standardsville Strawberry Festival also is just an example of our various projects, uh, and this, of course, would be in Greene County here. Uh, so we do various uh, farmers markets also. The Culpeper Master Gardeners uh, have a farmers market, go to the farmers market in Culpeper County every other week during the summer. Uh, the Green Master Gardeners go to, they, they, go, they actually attend their farmers market and do their plant clinic every Saturday. Uh, and the, uh, the Madison Gar Master, 
the Madison R. Madison group, which you're welcome to volunteer for any of those different various groups if you're part of the Rapid End River Master Gardeners. But uh, the Madison folks have go to once a month to their farmer's market and have a plant clinic there. And they, they actually do a theme, which I think is very fun. Uh, and they talk about various topics each month. So they've done uh, mushroom growing uh, as a topic uh, one month and uh, various different topics like that. And this is just our quick review too of the various projects. Uh, we also have a pollinator garden at Lynn Park in Culpeper County uh, that, they, that, our, that the master gardeners take care of. Uh, there's a native plant garden demonstration garden in Madison County uh, and um, various other, and we do, they, just like Mark was saying, a lot of the, a lot of volunteer work is also done at Dame, James Madison's Montpelier also. Um, so this we talked about a little bit already. So this is once you're done with everything and you are a, you are a master gardener. Uh, so you have, been, you are a certified master gardener. Uh, to continue that, just like I mentioned, 20 volunteer hours a year, eight head continuing education hours, which you can spread out across uh, association meetings, gardener related club lectures, just uh, let us know beforehand uh, which one you're going to. And um, it's usually pretty flexible as if it's a garden related topic, it's okay. Uh, Master Gardener College is also something you can attend. Uh, it's usually held at the Virginia Tech Blacksburg campus in June. Uh, but 2021 will be the um, International Master Gardener College, uh, hopefully anyway, in uh, Norfolk, Virginia, so in September, but who knows at this point, unfortunately. Um, but that was gonna be a very big party. Um, so there's International Master Gardener programs in Korea. I think there's a couple in Europe uh, and everybody comes for the international. Uh, it's a very fun event and I think the, there was one in Philadelphia last year. So that was the closest and uh, it was supposed to be in Virginia next year. So I guess we'll wait and see on that. Uh, you will receive a name tag. Um, just as reminders, uh, title can be used, can't be used for business purposes or personal gain, uh, but you, could, you can put it on the affiliations part of your resume once you become a certified master gardener and that is fine. Uh, and this is, uh, any other questions? This is all of our contact information here. Um, and uh, I think there was a couple chat questions coming, came in, but you're also welcome to you, unmute yourself and ask any questions you have too. So Ashley, I had one a really good question from Andy. Okay. Uh, who lives in the Charlottesville area, so um, Piedmont Master Gardeners would be right. who, who Andy would be volunteering with. Um, about um, wondering about all the programs we talked about sounding interesting, but how will they be changed for COVID safety? Um, very good question. And um, we're working our way through that. We do have a number of projects that are basically online. Um, for example, the writing for the newsletter, um, work on the website, etc. Our garden basics um, uh, workshops are online since COVID and that would continue until we're in the clear. We are starting to do some outside projects. For example, we've had a couple of potting parties and the way we handle that is with masks, social distancing, following the BCE guidelines, um, which we have. So we're we're moving forward a step at a time following the guidelines uh, with the emphasis on safety. So what we can do outside, you know, we can probably do in the spring, um, hopefully. Um, uh, inside activities are probably going to be limited to what we can do on Zoom. And, and so truly the projects we're giving you tonight they're not all active because of COVID. And, and we, you know, but the ones that are, are working well and, and we just keep learning on what we can do, but nobody is being forced to participate in anything um, that they don't feel safe with. Uh, yes, we have a question from Sylvia. Um, 
if you miss if you miss a couple of the classes, that is fine. Uh, they will be recorded, and we will have a. Uh, excuse me. We'll have a. Uh, we're going to have an online, uh, I guess, training site where everything will be housed. Um, so all the recordings will be put on there as soon as you uh, uh, pay your application fee and uh, everything goes through with the other other process uh, the other <laughs> uh, discussions with your various master gardener associations. Um, you'll be joint. You'll be. Uh, registered for that course, the training site, and you will have access to it right away, even before January. So, um, and the recordings will be placed on that site. So, yes, definitely, the each class will be recorded if you miss Great. one. Thank you. But, but we tend to have a limit on how many you can miss. Like, if you know you're going to miss more than two, then maybe right. rethink on when you and delay taking the class until next year. Right, Ashley. Yes, that's been the correct and, and Ashley, I think we should also mention the fact that there is an open book um, exam at the end of the. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So, not scary. Open book, but um, you know, we want to know that that the trainees have read the material and attended the Zoom, the Zoom training. Uh, that is a good transition there too, Bev. Um, we haven't talked about the manuals. <laughs> so you will receive a, uh, the application fee does include a paper paperback. Um, it actually comes in a binder. Um, so version of the training manual and a, uh, you will receive a, uh, comes as a flash drive, but it'll be a digital version of the manual too. So you get both versions with the application fee. So I'd also like to say that um, the training um, is done by Ashley and other professionals um, um, from Virginia Tech or Virginia State University. And it is really high quality um, research-based information that you will be learning and can use in your gardening, your own personal gardening, as well as a, as a volunteer for uh, the Master Gardeners program. And, and if you put your application in the Piedmont Master Gardener process, it, we do interview you just to kind of help answer more questions and make sure that you understand the commitment. Um, so, so there's a question from Caroline about how many prospective students have applied and um, I can only speak for um, Piedmont Master Gardeners portion of this, but um, as of today, we've had 10 applicants and we expect quite a few more. And the other thing to say about this is, if you know of other people who might be interested in applying, please pass on the information. And there is another orientation session next week on Thursday, same time. Um, so there's an opportunity for more people to, um, to uh, be involved in, in this briefing. You know, and I'll uh, say during the era of COVID, uh, lots of outdoor activities are extremely popular now. Bicycling, camping, hiking, gardening, landscaping, uh, home improvement, all those things are, people are, you know, kind of they're stuck at home and looking how to improve their lives. And those are some of the ways to do it. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. It's Michelle. This was really fascinating. I'm really, really um, so glad I joined this information um, Zoom meeting tonight. Uh, so I sent in my application to, I'm in Charlottesville, so I sent in my application today, but I didn't include my 190 bucks because I figured, well, I don't know if I'm going to be accepted or not. So I waited for that. I mean, ho hopefully that's the right way to do it. Um, that's absolutely the right way to do it. Okay. So the way the process works for the Piedmont Master Gardeners is, um, as Fern said, um, first we get the applications then we schedule an interview, which will be a Zoom interview, <laughs> of course. Um, and then, you know, we get back to you after that. And um, uh, 
after you're accepted into the program, then that would be the time for you to pay the 190. Okay. Is there a limit on the number of students that you're, you're, um, that you're bringing in? I mean, with, with Zoom, it's like, it seems like the, you know, there, there are no limits how many people can participate anymore, but I imagine there are. Well, what from Piedmont Master Gardeners, again, speaking only for them, we typically will take uh, up to like 25 um, for a particular year. Uh, and that, yeah. And that's mostly because of the workshops. When you, when you do workshops like pruning, and you, you have right. to kind of be limited a little bit. And so Ashley will have his hand, her hands full of uh, <laughs> a lot of work to do if, if we have 50 people. Yes, you're, yes, you're right, Fern. We we have capped it at fifty. So <laughs> if we get up that high, right, cool. Thank you. You're right. Uh, Zoom can um, at least the Virginia the the version Virginia Tech has Zoom could hold five hundred, but yeah, you yeah. can't do that with the workshops. <laughs> so. And the other limiting yeah. factor is that you know we're talking about uh, these particular counties, so you have to, you have to reside in one of the counties that we're covering. Yeah, which, which is a pretty large area, yeah. of course, too. I have a question about if you decide to move uh, to another part of Virginia later, you know, in the next three or four years, will that training be applicable in the next county where you're going? Yes, yes. Um, uh, you shouldn't have any problem transferring into a, they might have a few things they want you to do, but you shouldn't have any problem transferring to their association. I've done it. I, I took my training in, in Delaware in Sussex County and, and transferred here to Charlottesville area. If you move to Oregon State, you may have to repeat the class because you're in a little, little different geographical area, <laughs> but um, if you're in Virginia, no problem. Uh, Jane has a question about the applications. Um, I don't think we have a PDF available to be filled out online. So, I, uh, yes, mailing would be preferred, Jane. Yes. And uh, you're, you're right, I do not have the uh, addresses listed here, but uh, when you go to the uh, various websites to get the application, uh, it will list the mailing address then. So, or you're welcome to email either uh, either of us to to find out that information also. Any guess, other questions? I guess you could scan an email. You could, yeah, that's, that's true. I forgot about that. Thank you for. Yes, certainly. <laughs> Any other questions? I hope we didn't uh, leave anybody out. I'm not hearing any. So <laughs> uh, I would very much, I very much thank you all for attending tonight. Um, hopefully this was very helpful and uh, uh, especially if you didn't have any kind of idea what 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 uh, projects master gardeners were involved with hopefully that was very enlightening mm -hmm. um and um thank you uh fern bev uh mark sue y'all are welcome to say any last words y'all want to also i just want to say ashley if you and bev can stay on for just one minute i have a question <laughs> okay sure well, I can say it's a really good program and um you know, you will definitely enjoy it. I agree. I second that. Mm -hmm. It's a real, uh, it's a real people business in that, uh, you know, you're usually dealing with, well, it doesn't matter, kids, adults, uh, retiree, uh, and, uh, you know, the, they have a certain excitement and investment in gardening and seeing things grow. And it's kind of a fun, exciting thing to do. And there's a wide enough range of projects so that, you can um, you can do what you're really interested in or what you'd like to learn about. I mean, you, you can tailor the volunteering to 
to your interests. Yes. Sounds great for all your time. Sorry. Go ahead. Help. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I was just going to say thank you for your time and helping us to learn more. It's very interesting. We're really excited about it. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Uh, if there's no other questions, uh, thank you all for attending again, and uh, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. So. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye.